It's not common for the 49th pick in the draft to enter summer league with this much attention, but Imani Bates is not a typical second round draft pick. One of the most popular and polarizing second round picks in recent memory, it took a lot of twists and turns for Imani Bates to end up representing Cleveland in Las Vegas this summer. Previously seen as the next Kevin Durant, Bates' stock plummeted after failed NCAA stints with Memphis and Eastern Michigan University. He was written off as an inefficient shot chucker with limited athleticism and a questionable feel for the game. As a result, Bates nearly fell out of the draft entirely just a few years after being one of the top prospects in his class. Bates has seen the highs and lows of basketball stardom, and he is exactly the type of prospect that Summer League was built for. An undoubtedly talented player with everything to prove and nothing to lose, with his back against the wall fighting for his NBA life, Bates delivered an encouraging string of performances in the 2023 Summer League. He finished averaging 17 points per game on above 40% shooting from deep. He was named to the All-Summer League second team and helped lead the Cavs to their first ever Summer League championship with a perfect 6-0 record. So is Bates officially the steal of the draft, or is this just one step of a long journey to becoming an actual NBA player? Let's talk about Imani Bates and what he showed us in Las Vegas. Before we get into the video, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and stick around as I continue this series throughout the summer. And if you enjoy the video, please follow me on Twitter as you'll find more of my work for SB Nation and Write Down Euclid over there. As a late second round draft pick, Amani Bates entered Summer League with quite a few concerns, all of which were on display during his first game in Vegas. He shot just 5 of 18 from the floor, recording 3 turnovers and 0 assists. If you were concerned about his shot selection, efficiency, and ability to play as a team player, day one in Vegas wasn't very uplifting for Imani Bates. Thankfully, Bates has shown to be a rather self-aware prospect up to this point. He spoke extensively about his weaknesses in his introductory press conference and clearly soaked up his first opportunity to actually be coached by an NBA coaching staff. Because in game two, Bates played with a noticeably different approach. He shot an efficient 5 of 12, reining in some of his erratic tendencies that were present in Game 1. Then in Game 3, Bates went off for 21 points on 7 of 11 shooting from deep. Suddenly, he looked like a brand new player and was flashing the raw upside that made him an intriguing prospect to begin with. He still took some bad shots, but it's a blessing and a curse that Imani happens to be really good at making bad shots. He shot nearly 45% from deep across his final five games of Summer League, including heavily contested attempts like this one. At this stage of his career, Bates is more of a shot maker than a shot creator. He struggles to create much separation, if any, when shooting off the dribble. His best looks almost exclusively came from someone else breaking down the defense and then passing it out to him. Whereas anytime Bates created his own shot, it usually resulted in a difficult jumper over his defender. But a hand in his face doesn't seem to bother him. Amani has supreme confidence in his shot and his rapid release speed makes it difficult for an opponent to block him. This leads to some head scratching moments, but it also allows Amani to deliver wildly impressive stretches of offensive dominance. Still, Amani faces the same challenge that all volume shooters face, the inevitable cold streak. There will come a time when Amani isn't hitting from deep, and with the degree of difficulty on his attempts and his prior sample size in college, those days aren't far away. Refocusing Bates' attention to the little things might sound cliche, but it's what it will take for him to last in the NBA. Can Bates still be an impactful offensive player when he isn't making three-pointers, and does he bring enough defensively to stay on the floor? These are questions Bates will have to answer at the NBA level. It is clear this was conveyed to him during Summer League, as Bates displayed an eagerness to defend and move the ball that wasn't present during his time in college. Playing as a slightly more willing passer, Bates became a functional cog in the machine rather than the wrench he used to be. A healthier shot chart made Imani a consistent positive on offense, with his knockdown catch-and-shoot attempts complemented by the occasional pull-up bomb that made him a top prospect in the beginning. I still question if shot attempts like this are conducive to a long career for Bates, but his ability to make them, at least somewhat consistently, is undeniable. Bates might seem most impressive when he's drilling dazzling step back three pointers, but a quick push in transition for an assist, or this drive and dime to the dunker spot, 
are the types of plays that will make him a mainstay in an NBA rotation. Bates hasn't shown much upside as a playmaker, so I'm not sure if that will be the answer here, but using his gravity as an off-ball threat is one way Amani can open up the floor for Cleveland without even touching the rock. There are different forms of three-point shooting. Bates excels at pull-up shooting and spot-up shooting, but can he develop a true off-ball game as a motion shooter? We haven't seen him run around screens or relocate to open space really at all throughout his short career so far. This is something I'm excited to see if Bates can develop, because getting a defense to shift simply by moving without the ball is a valuable trait that will go a long way for someone like Bates who has already proven to be a lethal shooter. As for the defensive end, Bates was surprisingly passable. He mostly held his own and was never really picked on at any point in the summer league. He even made some great reads in the passing lane and recorded a handful of impressive help side blocks. Of course, this all becomes more challenging on the big stage. Rookies notoriously mention the speed of NBA basketball as their biggest adjustment when entering the league. The summer league simply can't replicate the speed and intensity of an actual professional basketball game. So surviving on defense will be much harder for Imani and everyone else in his draft class once they officially reach the next level. Serious NBA teams are not keen on streaky, volume shooters who don't provide anything else to winning. Even prominent three-point shooters like Joe Harris and Duncan Robinson have fallen out of rotations when the rest of their limitations become too damaging to their team. This is why Bates' marginal growth in other areas is the most reassuring thing about his summer league performance. Making quality reads on both ends of the floor is crucial to his development. So does Imani Bates have what it takes to be an impactful player for the Cleveland Cavaliers? I think the objective answer is maybe. He has shown enough promise to justify anyone who is invested in Imani at this stage, but the road to actually polishing his game enough to be on the floor for a team with legit playoff aspirations is a long one. But this isn't a bad thing. The 49th pick is always a project, and Bates is only 19 years old. It's rare for any teenager to play meaningful minutes for a team that has winning on their mind. Amani has landed in a great organization that will surely give him every opportunity to grow in the G League, and the Cavaliers will certainly have a use for a 6'9 forward who can shoot three-pointers if or when Bates becomes NBA ready. All this to say, you should feel encouraged by Amani's performance in the Summer League. The foundation of an elite shooter is there, and it's no secret what it will take for the rest of his game to become polished. The only thing left to do is work, and Bates seems prepared to commit himself to the grind, at least for now. Thanks for watching my video. Again, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button for more videos and hit me with a follow on Twitter for my other work.